people I know who to ask these questions to because joining us right now, the lead analyst for Pro Football Focus, co-host of the NFL Stock Exchange, Trevor Sikama. Um, how are you? Good morning, Kay. So good to be with you. I'm shot out of a cannon for some reason. I've had like just this much of my coffee, so you're so lucky to be joining me because I don't know what I'm going to look like by the time Roman Wilson uh, gets on the actual program. But I'm excited to talk to him, to get to know him. I, you know, I know about these guys, but I know so much more about them when I get to get through a, a conversation with them. But I'm curious your thoughts on him as far as maybe a trait that separates him from other wide receivers. Oh, Roman's awesome. And there's, I feel like a lot of different traits, right? I mean, he, first you have to talk about his speed. I mean, his speed is phenomenal. I mean, his mom ran track, he ran track. I mean, he's got the four, three speed in him. So, you know, wow. he's got that vertical ability that teams are absolutely going to love, but beyond that, okay. He's a little bit smaller in size, but mm. this dude will block his butt off for you. And that's how he gets on the field. That's how you get on the field at Michigan. I've heard the motto from them. No <laughs> block, no rock. If you're not blocking, you're not going to get thrown the football. And Roman Wilson got thrown the football a lot over the last two years. Why? Because he takes so much pride in blocking. He's good pound for pound. He's so strong. Deep down the field, you know you're going to have those contested catches. And just because he's, again, a smaller receiver doesn't mean he's afraid to go up and get it over some of these corners, even some of these stronger corners. So Roman's entire game is a lot of fun. And I see him as a top 50 type of a player where I think he could be going in the early second round. Absolutely. All right. Maybe we'll play this back for him and just get his confidence up. I love, I love a small scrappy player and that speed is no joke. Can't wait to ask him uh, about that. And something about these Michigan men this year. I mean, I had, I had Dante Whitner coming here telling me that the chargers are going to waltz right into the AFC championship because Jim Harbaugh is that dude. And these are players that, you know, came from him and learned from the school of him. Um, you are, you are a rare breed. There's a there's a tall tale going around the, you know the hallowed halls here at FanDuel about how many mock drafts you create participate in in any given draft season. Can you can you tell me that number? Uh, hundreds. I mean, we we might be pushing like over 500 of mock drafts. It feels like because I mean, when you talk about the mock drafts that I write for PFF, that I do on my podcast, that I'll do on other players' podcasts, and just and then that's not even counting basically all the ones that I do for fun. Anyways, like we have series for where fun. we go through. <laughs> five round mock drafts for every team, seven round mock drafts for every team. And then as if that's not enough, sometimes at night, I'll just be like, Ooh, yeah, but what if the Jags did this? Or like, what if the Eagles did this? And I'll fire up the PFF mock draft simulator and I'll run one anyway. So it's like, we're, we're at a sicko number of mock drafts at this point yeah. in draft season. So I don't know what the exact number is. Okay. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't even want to know. It's like, it's like looking at your phone usage number, you yes, know, sometimes it's like, wants to Oh, let's, that. Let's let's see how many hours that I spent on my phone. Oh Lord, I need help. Like it's one of those things, but for me, it's just mock drafts. Well, your disease is my benefit because I'm going to get into <laughs> your head over a couple of these things. There's this big debate with the second quarterback up the board, which I love. I love not knowing what's going to happen. Like all hell will break loose and it'll be great. In your opinion, with what you know from your bajillion mock drafts, Jaden or Drake May, who's got the edge between these two quarterback prospects with the fits that are allowed? So it feels like it feels like Jaden Daniels is trending towards that direction to be the pick at number two overall. But if I was the one who was calling the shots for Washington, I would take Drake May. Drake May is my QB two in this draft. He has been wow. really from wire to wire. I mean, Caleb has been my number one QB, but Drake May has been my number two over the last two years. Nobody in college football has more big time throws than this dude. And that includes that one year in 2020 where he was just a true sophomore starting for the first time. And look, Drake Mays just got all the arm talent in the world. Sometimes when we think about arm talent, we think, oh, just those deep ball passes. But it's so much more than that. It's velocity specifically. And when I think about that, I think of throws over the middle. You got to be able to attack over the middle of the field if you are a franchise caliber quarterback in the NFL. The DBs, they're too fast, they're too strong. The linebackers, the same way. Defensive coordinators are too smart. If you just throw outside the numbers, which a lot of college offenses do, and I don't really blame them for it because you know corners aren't just like the, the floor for them isn't nearly as high as it is in the NFL. Right. So you want to take advantage of those guys deep down the field to the sideline. But those over the middle throws, you've got to be able to do that at the NFL level, 10 to 20 yards down the middle of the field, right in between the numbers. It's such a crucial area to attack consistently. Drake May out of the top eight kind of consensus quarterbacks in this class. He's got the most attempts. He's got the most big time throws and he's got the second highest PFF passing grade when just throwing in that area. So that is why Drake may to me is the QB two in this class. And I'd be taking him at number two for He's Washington. So polarizing. I love it. I can't wait to see what happens there. Somebody, uh, sir, uh, uh, 
YouTube user named Sir Pepperoni said you're a mockaholic. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, that's that's very true. Yeah, I like you need to that. go to, to to go whatever <laughs> whatever uh, therapy version of mock drafts is. <laughs> okay, the twelve step program. We'll we'll, we'll figure that out in May. Uh, let's talk receivers. You've got your your Malik's. You've got your Marvin Harrison. He's sort of in a class of his own. Is there a guy we want to give more love to? Who's not getting enough attention outside of, of course, our guy Roman Wilson? Yeah, so I think there's a big debate for like who's wide receiver four, right? You mentioned like the top three who everybody loves no matter what, but then people would go, okay, who's wide receiver four in this class? A lot of people like Brian Thomas Jr. from LSU. Mm -hmm. People talk about Lab McConkey from Georgia, uh, A.D. Mitchell from Texas. I don't think Troy Franklin from Oregon gets enough love okay. and consideration to be that wide receiver four in this class. Really good vertical receiver. I know people were thinking, okay, maybe the combine numbers would have been better, but they were fine. They really were. And when you turn on the tape, you already know that this guy knows how to win vertically, but what separates him from that next tier of other wide receivers that might be still in that bucket, he's a playmaker after the catch. The yards per catch average is pretty high, even with a high average depth of target, which normally it's one or the other, right? Normally either the average depth of target is really high because you're getting it deep down the field and you're not really getting yards after the catch, or you're getting the ball much quicker, more manufactured, and they're giving you room to run after the catch. But it's kind of rare and you have to point out when players are able to do both of those things. And I just love the footwork of, of Troy Franklin and how he always wants to get those extra yards, whether it's through contact, but it's specifically making players miss. You see on the field right there, those force miss tackles. It's something that that playmaker mentality in him, it doesn't exist in every wide receiver, especially every vertical receiver. So this is just a dude who I think is going to get you every yard he possibly can with his athleticism. And that's why I think he should get considered for that fourth best wide receiver in this class. So when we're talking like, let's talk fit here, I'm thinking, oh, I don't know, the Buffalo Bills, they they could use somebody at the end of that first round. Maybe the Lions, that would sure them up in the NFC North. I'm thinking like always the Chiefs, I would expect to maybe get someone. Is there a team that you like for him? I mean, those would be the three yeah. that I would probably name, right? Because I don't know if he's going to go higher than that, right? No. The Colts need a wide receiver at 15. The Jags need a wide receiver at 17. But I don't think Franklin's going to go that high in the draft. But I do think there is a way that he could sneak into the back end of the first round. You mentioned, obviously, the Bills. They need to replace a lot of production so he could be there for them. I I don't I don't think the Lions are going to do it, but like wide receiver is kind of sneaky for them. You know, like they could add another wide receiver and then you've got Jamison Williams to stretch it deep down the field. You have Amon Ross St. Brown right. and like Franklin can That'd be, be nice. this. That'd be nice. Right. He could be like this fancy footwork kind of intermediate wide receiver to give them that trio there along with Sam Laporta and Jameer Gibbs and all those guys. So, uh, yeah, those three that you named, I'm, I'm right there with you. I think those are the three targets for him if he's going to go in the first. All right. Trevor, sick pup, sick him Let's do this. Uh, you're going through your, your, your mock drafts, your you know, algorithms, your abacus of stuff, whatever. Which team, and honestly, at PFF has, it's the shit. Like, it is it is the best draft simulator, the best info I'm always looking at. I mean, that Josh Allen trade happens this morning, I'm there. Where was he Where was he graded on the edge? 11th, which was surprising, but like, I write, that's what I do. I go right to PFF and say, let's talk about this, what makes sense, what doesn't make sense, and the draft areas when you guys really, really crush. But is there a team like, near? you know, we always talk about what's going on at the top, it's gonna be like uh, Mishagoss when it comes to, you know, like the the, quarterback position let's go end of first round is there a team that you find fascinating that could make a splash so i mean detroit is one of those teams right because i i am fascinated always by what dan campbell and what brad holmes are going to do like yeah. which kind of players they're going to target what they're going to do at the back end of the first round so they intrigued me i wanted to give them a shout out but i wonder what the eagles are going to do you know i was listening to you you know start off the show and you're right the eagles Went to a Super Bowl two years ago, started off last year really hot, and then, man, things did not end well for them the year before. Mm -hmm. So what are they going to do? Now, they have a first-round pick at number 22, but they also have two second-round picks, too. So they could get aggressive here. Like, I look at the Denver Broncos sitting at number 12 overall. They need, an, they need a second-round pick right now. Does Philly package number 22 overall and maybe their second second round pick, the later one, to Ooh. move up to within the top 12? And they could go get an offensive lineman that they love to, they'd love to get, right? I mean, I think about Talise Fuanga, the offensive tackle from Oregon State. Okay, you put him at right guard next year, and then whenever Lane Johnson retires, you just move him straight to right tackle, and it's just a brilliant transition. Or you can go up and get a corner that they so desperately need, a Quinion Mitchell, a Terry on Arnold. Terry on Arnold actually fits 
perfectly with what Howie Roseman normally drafts. So to me, I look at the Eagles because of their situation. They're sort of in a, you know, like a teetering point, like, okay, is yeah. the winning window kind of closing for us or are we going to hit our foot on the gas and try to keep it open as long as possible? So if they could trade up, then I think that tells you that they're still all in on who they got on the roster Dude. right now. No matter what the draft is, what year, where they're drafting, that that is like I could close my eyes. And which team are you most fascinated by? It's almost always going to be the Eagles as long as Howie's there. 